Okay. Recording. Okay. So, what is today? Uh, second of July, two thousand fifteen. Is it second or third? Third. Third. I think it's third. Oh, it's Friday third. afternoon, right? It is at uh, at three twenty-seven p.m. Right. Mm -hmm. Friday, day before Fourth of July. Right. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, Steve, tell me what you have done today and where, where you are and what you're going to do for the next uh, eight-hour session. Oh, today I've done uh, some research on constraints and uh, I think it's constraints, I believe. Yeah, constraints, mashing, and uh, yeah. So basically, I try to use uh, constraints or links to make composite beams in a fast, efficient way. A beam that's composite with a concrete slab? Concrete slab and a uh, uh, white French beam. Okay. And uh, I think uh, I've done uh, some, yeah, I think I've done some progress on it because uh, apparently we need to mesh both elements and then a lot of nodes will be generated, generated and there are internal, no, internal nodes on those elements. So if we connect them with links or constraints, then well, the two elements will behave composite, compositely, and uh, I'm using shell element as the uh, shell element for the for uh, concrete slab. slab. Yep. And what kind of element for the beam? Beam element. A like, beam element. Yeah, frame. Yeah. And so you're connecting them at the interface of the f tops of the slab to the um, to the bottom face of the concrete. Or to how are you the them? no, I'm I'm uh, I'm connecting them with their I mean I'm I. I can I, I choose their centroids and then connect them. But is that true? It's it's a test model I'm doing right now. Okay. Well, just recognize that um, mm -hmm. that that might be really really okay uh, if it's linear elastic. Okay. But if it's not linear elastic, then that may not be okay. Okay. So then, if that's not okay, then what are you going to do about the fact that you have? A, uh, a strain interface between the two that's supposed to be equal, but uh, the conditions of the state of stress in a slab may or may not be linear, and are, uh, may or may not be in the steel. Okay. Yeah. The, I mean, the strains are linear, but uh, the, 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 the states of stress will not necessarily be linear. So how do we accommodate that kind of response if we have a composite system? All right. Okay. That's something to think about. Now, um, then the other thing you've got to think about is, uh, okay, you got a fairly coarse mesh, and uh, and and that mesh, wh how we need to do a we need to do an evaluation of how refined a mesh do we need to get good uh, good resu results between right. the hand solutions, which is going to be we'll call theoretical, and the. Uh, Approximate solution, which we're going to be talking about as being the final element solution. All right. Right. All right. So at that point, uh, I'm not worrying about the effectiveness of the slab. I'm more worrying about our ability to linearly and non-linearly um, model the response of the overall system. Yeah, I haven't touched on the uh, the topic of non-linearity yet. I know you haven't. I'm just pointing it out okay. that we have we we're going to have that problem, and the question is is how do we make that problem? Uh, how how do we handle it and handle it properly? Well, and and, and and keep in mind that the whole purpose of the study is not about linearity. Right, it's right. about nonlinearity, non and how do we handle that nonlinearity? So, Seth has uh, you, you can you can you can give a beauty in a stress strain curve. I, I understand that. But uh, d does it handle uh, composite nonlinearity very well? I don't know the answer okay. to that question. You know, and so uh, this might be uh, something that we also want to touch bases with the the technical group at Computers and Structures who who, who actually uh, monitor and, and and work with people on this software, since it's you know we've leased that software from them. Okay. Right. All right. So, in terms of this of this part of the study, uh, you're looking at a slab beam system, and how how much longer do you think you're going to be working on that? 
Probably this weekend or uh, like another two days, probably. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm just I'm trying to. Yeah, it's I'm doing. Yeah, research work. I don't know. I'm I'm not doing like solid work right now. I'm trying to figure out how. I understand. I understand. I understand. Yeah. I understand. I understand. Uh, each one of us, each one of these things has got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that we got to solve, right? Right. Right. I'm solving problem right now. I'm not. You know, making like a yeah. I'm not doing solid work right now. I I understand. That's a whole different question. Yeah. And and solid work, by the way. No, no, no. Uh, there, not, there's I, no reason to even go into it. Uh, yet because I'm in the process of looking for uh, its capability to do non-linear non uh, structural response of the connection. So uh, that means I've got to get another version of it in here. Okay. Uh, so there's no, no point in spending it, any time on that until I get that in here for you guys. Okay. All right. Yeah, but I mean, I'm talking about I wasn't putting out the work. I'm doing the, uh, the preparation for the work I'm going to do. I understand. I understand. All right. That's clear. Okay. Yeah. So, is there any questions you have of me about this? No, but I did uh, get responses from uh, uh, ACI, ACI, and uh, yeah. ASC. Okay. So yeah. they they didn't give me explicit answers of uh, what you know what was the documents you know available around okay, well, time. What did they say? This is what they said. This is it. let me see. Oh, not not this one. They pretty much said that well, yeah, th 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 this one is from ACI. You need to consult with the engineer, the designer. <laughs> that's pretty much this what they said, and they told me this. Well, that's one, understandable. But perhaps what, or perhaps what we were asking is what do they have any pub, any documents that covered that time frame? Maybe that that's a that's a different question. Ask them that question. Okay. We 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 know about that. What we're asking for do you have do you have any? How do we get the publications that were in print? During those years. So let me see. For the ACI code. ACI, I believe. Uh, so yeah, that's what I was asking. What did you ask? So hi, I'm a research assistant at University of Alaska Fairbanks, major in civil engineering. Currently working on modeling a 47 star building that was made in 1985. I'd like to know what was the code or standard for concrete design around the time, including title, document, and a published year. All right, so let's ask a question slightly different. Okay. Let's just say, what what was the what was the what code was uh, pub, was being used by ACI by ACI in 1985? Well, what was the code being used by ACI by ACI in 1985? In 1985. Okay. And is it available to pur for purchase? Okay. That's a, that's slightly a different question. Just say my advisor would like for me to to try to get the ACI journal that was that the ACI 318 mm -hmm. code that was it that was in place in 1985. Right. In the the uh, as AISC people said pretty much the same thing except they don't sell historical ma uh, manuals. Oh, they don't. They so. don't. But uh, if you are a member, which I am, but I just cannot download it. With problem, you might be able to. Okay. If you want to? If you want to check? Yeah. It. So I'll join. I'll join it and 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 download it. Yeah, okay. and the answer is pretty. You know, pretty pretty brief. So it didn't, you know, it didn't, it didn't, well, that's okay. Didn't give, give a lot of information on. Uh, yeah. So the other thing you might do is go over to the library and see if they have the ACI three eighteen uh, in the in the shelves uh -huh. for the nineteen eighty five. Okay. So I I don't for, for, for a specific year at nineteen eighty five or. Well, it'd be a, it'll be a range of years. Okay. So I think they published them every three years or something like that. Okay. So it could be. So I know that uh, you know. Let's just say they published them every three years. And 1963 was, so it'd be 1963 to 66, then 67 to 1970, and then 71 through 73, we'll say, and 74 to 76, we'll say, and then 77 to 80, and then maybe 81 through 83, and 84 through what, 87 or something like that. Okay. I don't know. That's probably about when. So 84 to 87. 
that code probably, I think they published every three years. Okay. Updates. So we're looking for the, the, the one that was appropriate for that, those two period of time. And matter of fact, we may get, get, get a couple in there so that we be sure that we've got the right ones. Okay. All right? Okay, there. So I'd say, I'd say go to the library and see if you can find yeah. it there first. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but so the library is closed, I think. I think the university is closed right now, right? Is the library open? Right now? Right now? No, not, not, not right now, but uh, on Monday uh, they'll, be, they'll be open. Okay, good. So, uh, and and I go I th I would go ahead and ask ACI this question anyway. So, uh, ACI. Yeah. You mean the we, we, Yeah, the American Country okay. Institute. What I just asked you to. What we're asking them specifically okay. is what code did they have? Uh, what, what what was the code in existence in 1985? Okay. That's period. So okay. That's pretty simple. So what was the code being used by them? No, no. Don't use say being used by them. Just say. What was the ACI code 318 in 1985? What was the ACI? Say it again. What was the ACI code 3 ACI 318 code in 1985? They should have be able to tell us what pu what publishing date and, and and version and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. So let's let's get on <clears throat> while. Or is that everything for you? Yeah, I think. Okay, so while I'm talking to Fong, you get on uh, Google and see if you can find how they're referencing the ACI code. In other words, is it by version? Is it by uh, ISBN number? How do how do they have that? And can we look it up ourselves instead of getting back to them? In other words, so let's find that out. You want to find the ACI ACI code that was a, that that they had published in 1985. Okay, 1985. And that's 318, ACI 318. That's the code. So... Building code regarding structural concrete, da 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 da, da. So what we're looking for is the one that was applicable at that... History of ACI? Well, I think they have, a histor they have a chronicle what, of, what uh, we want is the historical record of the ACI 318. 318 historical. I think uh, they already CD combo on this one. I'll this one. Okay, so while he's doing that, let you and I talk about what uh, what's going on with you. Yes, uh, so in yesterday I make a simple beam with the concrete deck and okay. only middle point connection and we check the error is, uh, uh, error is uh, 20 percent. 20% difference between that and your hand calculation? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think there has two reasons. The first reason is we only have one link between deck and the beam. Second reason is we only have dead load and the load is very small, so it caused a large error. So so let's put on it, let's put 100 pounds per square foot on this thing yeah. and see what it's going to do as a superposed live load. Yes. Okay. Yes, and uh, so uh, what I today is doing is I just add the link. Uh, I add uh, like uh, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven link between the concrete deck and the beam. So and the results become converge to the hand calculation. So the result uh, yes. become like a seven percent. Yeah. Okay. 7%. So it's getting it's getting closer. Yes, it's converged. So. Um, I think we we need more link between them so it can make them composite. Okay, but yeah. now let's let me ask you this: How yeah. how is your composite uh, linked together? Is it kind of like the same as Steve did at the at the uh, at the, uh, the, the the centroids? Um, yes, um, there. Um, I I think uh, um, what I'm doing is uh, so the, the this is a beam and the. Share share elements they are at the same surface they share the same point so the same point will find them automatically and uh, then uh, tie them together 
So I know what I'm doing is offset the beam. So but how do you how do you account for the fact that the slab is actually not in line with that neutral surface, but it's above it, and the beam is not truly in line with that neutral surface because now it's a composite system, mm -hmm. and so the overall neutral surface has changed. So uh, yes, uh, I have offset the so the the, the beam central is not at the central of their uh, actual is the offset from the move to uh, real con real real position. So I just offset the beam and offset the deck move deck forward and move the beam downward. So. And, and do you, does it happen by hand, or do you ha or can it happen automatically? Uh, I just happen. I need to modify them, so make them to. But do you have to calculate that by hand, or how do you know where to put them? Uh, I just make it as a same as a real condition. So move the beam at the bottom and move the deck at the real real, real position to I, see the I see, I see. yeah see the three D view view where. So the strengths yeah. are then equal. Uh, yeah, they they become get a good result. So they. They start to converge. Okay. So, so, so you're going to do this uh, half again? Is that the what you're going to do since you got it down to seven percent? Uh, yes. Uh, I think uh, uh, for this uh, uh, this building. So I just try to check how many link I need to put between the uh, deck and the beam. So if we get a much better accurate result, we need to put a much more link. So, okay. uh, so it's uh, like a line between the time and uh, the result we put. If we put more time and add more link, and the result will be much better. So right, yeah. and I and I don't want to sacrifice results, but yeah. what I do want to do also yeah is to be able to make some enough runs that we know what's going on. Yeah. So let's mm -hmm. th we're going to have to uh, probably evaluate mm -hmm. the refinement necessary versus the time it takes to run it. Yes. Yes. Know, and, and see where we are going to be. Yes. Okay. Uh, and even if our solutions are not perfect, yeah, uh, to correlate against what the behavior is, mm -hmm. we might we might be able to take a rougher mesh, yeah, to to, to make preliminary determinations, mm -hmm. then come back and refine it, yeah, yes. where it takes a lot of extra time. But at yeah. that point, we've already determined what needs to be done and how to go about it. Yeah. And we can uh, take advantage of our learning yeah. uh, at, a, at a faster pace model to be run yes. uh, to, to the more refined model. So yes. think yeah. about that as well. Yeah. So what are you going to do about handling the nonlinearity issue that I was talking to Steve about? Um, um, have you thought about that? Uh, yes. Uh, so actually, so for the last few days, uh, we make sure the link between the concrete deck and the beam. So and then I uh, I plan to work work this into the uh, two story building and make sure it's working dead load and live load, and then we'll, next step is uh, we'll uh, I come back to this beam to uh, to check the no linear behavior. So I also check how it's were broken. So if that was work, then come back to two story building to check whole building how it's broken, how it's uh, fall down. So. Yeah, uh, so I think uh, I wish can make sure this building can get the dead load and the customer. So, so is, it, uh, yeah. is it something that we could, uh, yeah. is, it, is that something you got to check manually or is that something we can do by uh, software wise? Uh, I, I think, uh, yes, uh, I, think I, 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 we, we, I think I should do a sample to check the nonlinear and then check the two story build, building's nonlinear behavior. So, so I guess what I'm thinking about is yeah. that uh, if we can write an algorithm to search for the maximums, yeah, I know okay. we know already know Abacus has that, uh -huh. but that way we could search on a particular like the, like the concrete or the steel, yeah, where it's most stressed, yes, and then even if you have to do manual, then mm -hmm. uh, you are not looking at the entire structure; you're looking at pieces, yes, you know uh -huh. where the most stress point is, and yeah. then, mm -hmm. then we rerun it based upon mm -hmm. what we've learned there and then mm -hmm. uh, we do it again and, yes. see, and see what those changes are. Okay. I mean, well, I mean, we could probably write a, an algorithm to do all that for us, but uh, while we're starting to learn this stuff, maybe 
uh, doing it a little bit by hand is not a big deal, you know, yes, uh, manually, right? Uh, I, I totally agree. So same as our like simple simple beam, we're doing by hand, then sub 2000, then up kills. No linear, we should do it by hand, right. sub 2000. So exactly. make sure what we're doing it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. 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 So what do you plan on doing over the next day in terms of now where you are uh, it, it, are you you're going to refine your model? As I understand, right? Yeah, uh, refine the model. Uh, see the result will keep on converge and okay. uh, put a two-story building. Use this kind of link and check they can stand there and uh, they can uh, get the data load uh, and uh, check no no linear. So yeah, okay. All right. then go back two-story no linear. Then temperature two-story temperature. Yeah. So yeah. So what? So guys, I want you to um, uh, once we're done and I, and I'm through talking, mm -hmm. then I will I will step away and mm -hmm. if you will move that camera and so that we can take pictures of what you've done here, look at the screens, okay. communicate what you've been doing to the camera, mm -hmm. uh, and we can see the 3D on the screen, and we yeah. can talk a little bit about each one of your models. And that way we've got a record of it on film, exactly what, what we're doing today. Okay. 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 And we'll try to do that each day. So okay. That, so we got a kind of a summary of where we are. Okay. All right? Okay. So like, you want to do it right now? Like, no, no, not right now. I want to still talk about what you just found out when you got online. Oh, I found a uh, historical ACI building code requirements. From 1908 to 2005, it's uh, 200 bucks. Even though if you're, if you're a member, 120 bucks. Okay, so uh, so uh, so it has all this stuff listed. Yeah. Okay, and, and so uh, we can get it, and maybe we can request it from the library. Right, and which year would you recommend? 1983. Well, let's take uh, what's the what's the next year after 1983? Next year in 1986. So I don't. So I would say get both 83 and 86. Okay. And that way we've covered that range at that point, right? Yes. And I don't, we don't need to ask the, the, that question No, anymore. we don't, okay. because now we know. So we can go get it from the library or, or we, we can purchase it, right? Yeah, right, yes. right, right. I knew they had that. Now, I would say, Steve, do the, exactly the same thing for the AISC. Okay. And, uh, and I know they have them for the AISC as well. And I'm pretty sure that uh, LRF um, ultimate strength design was being used as the main thing for uh, in 1983. Was it was yeah he was definitely so okay it, it, okay well good so we know we know that we can get that what about ANSYS ANSI did you have any re yes I haven't got any response from them yet <laughs> but we what we might do there is the same thing we just did here uh, we we've got on their website we know it's available. Right. And so, so check it at the library and see if we can get it at the li library. And if we can't, we certainly know we can buy it. Right. Okay. So, over the next few days, let's get it in here, one okay. way or the other. Okay. Yeah. With all these. Okay. And Dr. Palsy? Yeah. About this uh, composite beam. Yeah. So, you said, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, ultimate goal is to analyze non linear behavior. Well, yeah, but let's get the linear first. Right. I mean, right, once we can get first. linear, yeah. and we know what uh, that we get good results linearly. Okay. Uh, and we're going to do our first set of studies linearly anyway. Okay. Uh, then, I mean, when we go to these two, when we go to this two-story, uh, two floors put together, twelve okay. and thirteen. Okay. And we look at the response of thirteen with respect to twelve. Okay. We're going to do that linearly. Okay. Okay, and then. We're going to try to understand that response, and once we have that understanding, then we're going to th we're going to then increase the load and put it into the nonlinear range and, and check in its response then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I'm still doing a kind of like tentative study on you know testing on a how to model a composite beam. So I I think I got it. Okay. But I you know I, as what he just said. So I. I want to test how many links, how many well, yeah. and, 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 to and see you need how to the res how, yeah. how the results yeah. you know will converge. And and the, and the theoretical approach to doing that is to come in here and 
make the number of links you have very, very minimal. In other words, okay. uh, so it's practically only a couple or three. Then you're going to go in and you want to take those results and compare it against your hand. Yeah, yeah. Then you're going to come in and double the number of links. Okay. In other words, come, come to the spaces and put one in between each one of the sp large spaces you have. Check and see it, how much difference it made in terms okay. of improvement to the solution. Okay. And then you do it and double it again right. until you are at a place where the comparison is, is sufficiently accurate enough okay. that we can call it good. Okay. And then we, we move on. And that's, okay. that's what Fong is doing as well. Okay. okay. And at the end of the day, once you both are at the place you think you want to be, then let's compare our results between the two programs. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Because okay. we're comparing against hand solution too. Yeah, well, we're 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 almost there. Pretty yeah. much. And he yeah. already got the result coming out, right? Yes, for the uh, the seven point connection, I already got the result. Coming and you out. got a three point. So, so yeah. as soon as you put in seven point, you're probably going to get a correlate, be able to correlate pretty right. well with him. Right. You know. Um, because there, it seems to me that the two programs are using this pretty much the same technique. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You know, at this point, right? Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. What What is going to be really quite interesting is see how well we can handle this non-composite. Yeah. And 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 the partially composite. Right. Yeah. Yes. I already asked yeah. a Quick question. Sure. So, um, can you tell me just intuitively if we trade a, you know, the concrete slab? Not as a, a beam element, but as a uh, like shell element, and to put put it on top of uh, the, uh, the, the the beam. The beam, the, uh, beam, yeah. beam is a composite yeah. structure, yeah. and then under loading, yeah. the, the the deflection of that should be larger than uh, the height calculation by treating them I, both I, as beam I, elements or or smaller. I, I think it would be smaller. It'd be smaller. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we'll I guess we'll see. Okay. That our ability to do what we're doing here uh -huh. by hand is going to be challenged here pretty quick. Okay. We, we, we're, not, we're not going to be able to do the same thing that programs are doing. We're using this hand calc as a basis to get started with the most fundamental, simple solution. Right. And, once, and if we can get one-to-one -one correlation between mm -hmm. everything there, then soon as the, the next step, the computers are going to bypass us, you know, because we're not going to be able to do the same thing it yeah. can do. And by the way... Yeah. I think it doesn't hurt, you know, if I try to use solid, you know, try to learn some SolidWorks to see how, if I model the composite, the composite beam under in SolidWorks and see how how the results, you know, I don't have can be that. okay. Because we're going to use SolidWorks anyway. Okay. Yeah. Uh, particularly, uh, I'm I'm convinced that using SolidWorks to look at the the load column beam behavior response is going to pay dividends for us. Right. And, and both linearly and non-linearly. Right. Because we'll get at those MFE curves, we'll get a structural stiffness, spring stiffness, we can put into the two programs. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, today is uh, Jan uh, July the 3rd, 2015, the day before uh, 4th of July, the holiday. So in the last two days, I did uh, research on SAP 2000. I have been trying to find out how to uh, model composite beams, especially its, uh, compo its, its behavior on SAP 2000 version 15. So I, oh excuse me, so I made gray lines, so it's a 3D model and uh, from this point to this point we have a beam element and if I extrude it You'll find out we have a wide flange beam, and I can change the angle for you guys to see clearly. So the uh, the wide flange beam is uh, W24 times 55, and whoever you know knows uh, uh, steel construction, whoever is familiar with steel construction knows what W24 times 55 is, the size of the uh, the steel. W24 20, is the height of the wide, wide flange beam and 55 is the unit weight of the beam. So now I'm going to go back to the uh, uh, grid line view of the structure. And then let's go back to 3D. Now I'm going to put a 
a shell element on top of it. Oh, excuse me. Let me zoom in real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna put, uh, see, I'm putting uh, the shell element on top, on the top grid line right here. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Now we have a uh, shell element, and you can see the shell element here is uh, the type is uh, plate and thick. This is the uh, the stuff I chose because plate element, I mean shell element has two kinds, has two kinds, plate and shell. So plate is more accurate, and plate has two kinds as well, which is thin and thick. And thick element is more always more accurate. But uh, the computational time is uh, it takes more time to com to compute. And now I have assigned all the properties, including the concrete and the steel, the beam, including the concrete slab and the steel beam, and all the material properties are defined right here. We have uh, the uh, 300, 3,500 psi concrete and uh, uh, eel strings 50 psi steel. And the concrete slab is defined as such. So the area section is uh, shell element, plate, and you can see we have uh, it's made of concrete, and it's uh, plate and thick. And uh, the thickness of the uh, the membrane is not 66; should be 5.5, 5.5 inches. That is the thickness of uh, the concrete slab. Okay. Now there is now the structure or the model is only under self weight loading. And uh, we can see the loading patterns. It's that load and the self weight multiplier. If I set it to 1, modify and then click okay. Now I analyze the response of it by clicking uh uh, analyze and then we only need to run the linear static case for that load that's for self weight only and then we run running now now we have a response oh sorry guys I forgot to put links on so I need to put uh, so first of all I need to uh, mesh it first so I need to measure uh, how to do that so I go to assign I so first of all I need to click the air the the concrete slab on top. So now we have, uh, you know, you see those uh, dash red lines here. So it's chosen, and then I assign area, and then we mesh it. So let's say we mesh into four different uh, two by two, you know, four sub uh, sub elements. So now it's uh, it has it's two times two. Uh, now it has four, which is two by two elements. I click it, and uh, now I'm gonna put links on to make sure the whole composite beam and concrete slab act as a composite material. So I need to define the link first. I imagine, or I already defined the link. So we have a fixed link, and if you check the property of it. So we can see all the degree of, degrees, degrees of freedom in all the, all degrees of freedom in six directions. You want you to use three R1, R2, R3 are fixed. So now, if I choose to draw two point link, and then uh, it's fixed link right here. So I connect this two point, and then this point here this point here. Oh, I made a mistake here. So I delete this, go back, and then draw a two joint link right here. And the end, I do the same. I put a, a link right here, right here. So now we can run the uh, 
analysis. All right, now we have a composite material, and we can see the material. I mean, the the composite beam just uh, you know deflected under SAP calculation. So let's see how much it deflected. So I need to change the an angle constantly to make sure. Okay, so at this point, the, the uh, deflection in U3 direction which is the uh, Z direction should be zero because here these two nodes are fixed they cannot be moved they are the boundary conditions so U3 at this point is zero which is the uh, the end of uh, this side of the steel beam and this one is also uh, fixed which is also zero on the outer end they should behave the same way zero deflection Another zero deflection. In uh, the middle point, we have a uh, deflection right here and right here, and everything is in uh, inches. So this this is the uh, study I have done so far, and I need to check it with hand calculation, and I need to put more links there to to see if the result converge. So. That's, that's the, the stuff I've been working on, the behavior of a composite beam with concrete slab on top and WY flange beam underneath on SAP to, to check its uh, behavior, the mechanism. And uh, that's my daily report today. Hi, hello, my name is Feng, and uh, today is uh, July 3rd. Uh, I talk about my today's work. What I'm doing is uh, we are making a simple beam and see the accuracy of our analysis result. So, and uh, what I'm doing today is I add, the, uh, I add more link between concrete deck and the beam. So check the, uh, our result is converged to our ca hand calculation or not. And uh, tomorrow I will add more link between the concrete deck and to to the beam to think to find find out the error between them, and uh, to see how much time where this software running and uh, also check how much link we need to get a good result. That's it.